Similar to the face frames, the rails and styles for the cabinet doors will be made from hard maple. These boards are already surfaced on two faces and one edge, so I'll get started by breaking them down to rough length using the jigsaw. Over at the table saw, I'll break everything down to rough width, and then I'll let these parts rest for a few days to allow for any movement after being cut. It's a few days later now, and over at the jointer, I'm just taking a quick pass to make sure I have a nice straight edge on one side. Back at the table saw, I'll use the edge I jointed against the table saw fence and bring all the parts down to a final width of 2 inches. And finally, I'll cut all the parts to final length. The lower door styles are longer than my saw table, so I clamped this large square to the fence rail in order to extend it out and create a stop block at the correct length. And here we have all the rails and styles ready for joinery. I picked up this shaker style door router bit set, which will cut the groove for the center panel, add a nice chamfer detail, and also cut the matching tenon on the ends of the rails with the second bit. These bits are adjustable to fit your needs, and I'm really happy with how they performed. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Before I start running things through the first bit, I'm using a work light and holding the parts at a low angle to try to find any defects or tear out, and then marking the back of each piece. When I start routing, I'll know the back always needs to face up, and this will make sure the show face is clear of any of these defects. Now I'll pass each piece through the first bit to create the groove for the center panel and the chamfer detail on the inside front edge. And here's a close-up look at that resulting profile. For the longer parts, I used a couple of feather boards in order to keep downward pressure on the stock as it passes through the bit. I've now switched over to the other bit to cut the tenon profile on the ends of each rail after a few test passes to dial in the correct bit height. After switching over to the other bit and cutting this tenon part, I noticed I was getting this blowout on this chamfered angle that the other bit leaves. And the reason for that is my miter gauge, I was using this piece of wood as a backer, and you can see there's a small gap right down here where this angle is. So as it's coming through the bit, it's there's no support here, so that piece is kind of blowing out. So to solve this, I cut the same angle that's on the rails onto a scrap piece, and then I glued it onto the bottom of a new sacrificial fence for my miter gauge. Um, and now these pieces nest together, and that angle now has support behind it. So as it goes through the bit, it's supported and no longer blows out. And you can see on this piece here, it's nice and clean. And this tape here is just kind of help keep the piece from rocking up since they don't align exactly when I glue those together. With all the rails and styles complete, I'm moving on to breaking down this half-inch maple plywood for the door panels. On this first cut, I miscalculated a bit and the sheet ran into my CNC table off-screen, so I had to crank the blade up to finish that last inch or so of the cut. With the pieces a bit more manageable in size, I started breaking them down to proper width. Thank you. 
When cutting to length, I pull the stock backwards across the blade to score the back side of the plywood. I'll then raise the blade to finish the cut. You can see here this basically eliminates the splintering and chip out of the thin veneer and leaves a much nicer edge. This may not have been entirely necessary in this case because I'm going to cut a rabbit around the edge of each panel, but you never know how much of that veneer is going to splinter, so I wanted to make sure the back of my doors didn't look like garbage. And here I've got my dado stack and a sacrificial fence set up, and I'm cutting that rabbit on the back side of each panel so the remaining edge thickness will fit into the groove on the rails and styles. Off camera, I sanded everything to 150 grit to prepare for the water base stain that I'll be applying. To assemble each door, I applied glue around the rabbet on the panel and then the grooves of the rails and styles. On the rails and styles, I'm putting the glue on the back side of the groove in order to avoid squeeze out on the front of the door panels. I'll add some glue to the tenons of the rails and use a small brush to spread it out evenly to make sure I have a solid bond between the parts. I'm using Tight Bonds Hide Glue because it has a much longer open time than standard wood glue and gives me plenty of time to get things put together, aligned, and clamped up before setting up too much. It really takes a lot of the stress out of these more complex glue ups. Because the panels are made of plywood, I don't have to worry about them expanding and contracting the way a solid wood panel would, so that's why I'm okay to glue these panels in. Once I have all the glue applied, I'll fit the parts together and then use the clamps to squeeze all the joints tight. I'll use some longer clamps to make sure the rails are pulled in even with the ends of the styles. Once everything looks good, I'll set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Once the glue is set, I sanded all the glue joints to flush up any slight misalignment and remove any remaining glue squeeze out. And now we're on to adding the hinges. I picked up this jig from Craig and it made the process really simple. Each of the upper doors received two hinges and each of the larger lower doors got three hinges. I mounted all the doors prior to starting any finishing just to make sure everything was going to fit and close properly. I didn't want to get them all stained and then find out I needed to trim a sixteenth of an inch off in order for the doors to close properly. With everything looking good, I moved on to finish. Before staining, I added an eighth inch round over to all the edges, which I forgot to film. The stain I'm applying is General Finish's water-based stain, and this is actually a mix of their whitewash and graphite colors two parts whitewash to one part graphite. Each door took three coats to get full coverage and a few of them even took a fourth coat on the front. You really have to work quickly with this water-based stain. It dries incredibly fast. It's almost beyond comprehension to be honest. And while I love the color we ended up with, I will say the whitewash and graphite colors do not stay mixed well. You have to continually mix them as you apply, as the colors start to separate out as soon as you stop mixing. For the top coat, I'm using General Finishes High Performance in Satin, just like I did for the face frames. I also add in about 15% of the dry time extender to help it flow out evenly before drying. Similar to the stain, this stuff dries to the touch incredibly fast. I applied three coats using an inexpensive HVLP sprayer from Rockler. 
I applied two coats and then sanded with a 320 grit sanding sponge to smooth out any bumps before applying the final coat. I also stained a couple of strips of maple for the toe kicks as you can see being sprayed here. With that, the doors were complete. I reinstalled them on the cabinets and added the door poles to finish out the project. Well, thanks for following along with this build. This wraps up the cabinet build series. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I greatly appreciate you hitting that like button if you don't mind. And don't forget to get subscribed if you're not already part of the channel. If you haven't seen the other parts of this cabinet build series, I'll have a playlist at the end of this video and in the description below. I hope you'll check out those videos as well. And we'll see you on the next build.